Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am here with a whole bunch of new stuff today. We are going to be doing a review through here on Space Marine Adventures Labyrinth of the Necrons. And you'll notice I'm moving the camera around because I have it on one of those gimbal stabilizers now, so it's supposed to help it to where I can be stable and move the camera around, give you guys a closer image of the game as we uh, as we play through it. So we're going to see how that works. I've got that little bit of new equipment and I have a new editing PC now. Killed myself getting that one. So we should be up and running. Everything should be good to go. We're going to take and try this out and see how it works. Uh, if you guys see this video, let me know what you think. If you don't, it means my new equipment doesn't work and doesn't matter anyway. So this is something that uh, I think is just released. Uh, not too long back by uh, Games Workshop, Space Marine, so obviously it is Games Workshop. And this, the best way I can kind of describe this is the dealer's, you know, little taste to get you addicted to their plastic crack. And that's, you know, what 40K is. They're releasing a whole lot of box sets, individual games that will come with, you know, a handful of Space Marines because they want you to take and... Uh, get into the game in some way shape or form you know whether it's uh, playing you know one of these and like oh okay this is cool let me step up to a bigger game which might be something like this that I have in work in progress over here this Blackstone Fortress uh, which I will be filming here very soon with a special guest host which you guys will meet here soon and it's not Gippy's gal it's a different guest host who's coming on to uh, help me out with that playthrough we're going to do a real big playthrough series on that so you guys stay tuned for that one uh, but we're going to play through this and like I said this is a basic game if you played uh, Space Hulk this is going to seem a little familiar to you but it's kind of like a dumbed down version of Space Hulk and I almost think this is something that would be very good uh, for people who have children or a spouse you want to get into a little bit of tabletop gaming uh, something a little more simplistic that they can easily get into and grasp and understand uh, but has enough meat to it that you're going to enjoy playing it as well. Um, let's just take and actually start playing the game. I'm not going to take and get into uh, all the specifics. You guys will see it. There's not a whole lot of very specific rules to this game. Uh, it really is kind of, uh, kind of simple. You're going to have four Marines you can pick from five. You guys can see there is the five colors. And I'm not gonna paint these guys since the colors actually do matter. If you painted them, you would have to take and go buy, you know, Blood Angels and Ultramarines and what are these, the Ravens? Raven something or other? Uh, I forget the, uh, the others, but you would have to leave it to where you could tell the color difference between those guys. So I'm just gonna leave these Marines as they are. So one of our guys is Sergeant Cassius here. And you can see they have a range, set of actions, and then their special ability. Uh, your range, obviously, it's how far you can take and shoot an enemy from. Your actions is how many times you can move and or attack during your turn. And then each Space Marine is going to have one little special ability. This guy, uh, since he has a chain sword, he gets to add one to his rolls against Necrons that are adjacent to him. Our green guy is our flamer, which I forget what the green ones are, but uh, each time you roll a six or more for him, when he attacks a Necron, every Necron in an adjacent square uh, to the attack Necron is also destroyed. And that's actually a big deal with this because you are not attacked by the enemy during their turn. Their turns are comprised entirely of populating the board. Okay, they're just trying to expand the amount of uh, tokens that are on the board, which are their little guys. And here you see a little token form. And there are different types, which you guys will see here in just a sec. Our other Space Marine, we have Brother Frostclaw. He has a combat knife. He can perform one free attack uh, action each of his turns, but only against the Necron that is in a square adjacent to him. And you guys can see he has range of six, actions four. And our last guy, this is my favorite. This is a heavy uh, bolter. Come on, zoom, focus in. Like I said, I'm using new equipment, so bear with me as I'm uh, adjusting this. Okay, here we go. Uh, add one to the dice roll made for Brother Grimm when he attacks a Necron, unless that Necron is in a square adjacent to him. So this guy gets a bonus uh, at range. The others get bonuses. 
uh, at distance. It just, uh, or up close, it just depends on what's going on. Bear with me. Since I'm using a program to do this now, which is different from just the camera's normal um, video camera that I normally use, so I'm kind of having to adjust the focus manually. Bear with me as I'm kind of learning this thing. But like I said, I wanted to learn it on a basic game, something easy that I could, you know, do one-handed. Our enemies are going to be your basic Necron Warrior. It's got a little blurb talking about uh, who they are. But you guys can see the only relevant information game-wise is a three on there. And that's simply what you've got to roll equal to or higher to kill. That's it. And then our Immortals, which are also in this uh, first level, are a four. So... The other two that you'll have, there's another set of enemies that I don't have them sitting out right now. They're a five, I forget what they're called, Lich, I think it is, Necron Lich. They have to roll a five equal uh, or higher to beat them. And then there's the Necron Lord that you got to roll a uh, six or higher to beat him, but those are in the later levels. You're going to start off on level one, and so I don't read through this whole thing for you, I'm just going to tell you, this mission just involves us going to this console... And once we get there, we have to take an action, roll a six, and once we do, it's going to reveal which one of the exits has a stairway that we can take an exit from. Once we get there, that's it. Now, I know you're sitting here going, okay, well, I understand the basics of how the Space Marines attack and how uh, that's going to work, but how did these guys attack? Like I said, that's simply going to be them spawning the board, and they're trying to get as many tokens as possible. On the enemy turn, you're going to be drawing these cards over here. I'm not going to flip it over yet. You'll see it here in just a sec. Where it's going to tell you to populate the board just depending on where you're at. And you see they have numbers on the board. Five, six, four, you know, a D6 basically. And the enemies are going to spawn there. And if there's already an enemy in that square, say we spawned here then the enemies are going to spawn in the adjacent squares. And it's going to keep going like that, and they're just going to keep filling out. And the way your guys actually take damage is if an enemy spawns in your hex. Now, they can't spawn on, like, portal hexes, which are these little symbols here. But they can spawn on stairwells, which is what's going to be here. And then the exit stairwell is going to appear somewhere over here. You see there are four exits. One that you pick to start at, and then three others there across the board. Now, the game's going to be controlled by an initiative deck, and the initiative deck is going to have two cards per Space Marine. And like I said, this red guy is not in it. He's just sitting there. Two cards per Space Marine, and then four of the Necrons. And when the Necrons come, we draw an initiative card for them, and they populate the board. So let's go ahead and start our game. Oh, and one other thing that I like that they included was there's a dice for each one of the Marines in the game. So they each have their own little dice, special color. So... If you're playing with uh, kids or spouses, things like that, they'll get a kick out of that. So let's get the game started and see how well we can do taking on the Necrons. All right, focus for me. All right, we're starting off with the Wolf, which, what are they called? The Raven Wolf, something like that? All right, so, unfortunately, he's my guy that's farthest back, okay? So he only has four actions. I could go, I can move through my own guys, I can shoot through my own guys, but I can't stop on my own guys, okay? So I would either have to spend all of his actions moving up to this square and stopping, but the problem with that is there is a Necron, as you guys can see, already in that square, and if the Necrons were to spawn there, he would take a wound, and each Space Marine only has two wounds. On their cards, you have your regular side, and then you have your wounded side. Once you take and you get one wound, take another, you're dead. So we do not want to take an end adjacent to a spawning point that already has a Necron in it. So we're just going to take a shot action and try to take out this Necron here. Now, since he is, uh, is he in range? Yeah, I got a range of six with that uh, Space Marine. Since it's a Necron warrior, the Necron warriors you guys can see, just need a three or higher, so let's take it. Let's shoot over to our little dice tray here and see what we can get. Oh, that's one action. Let's take our second action. What do we get? One, five. Okay, we got it. Now, unfortunately, that is probably going to be his turn because I do not have any other Necrons available. 
Now we have our nifty little bag here that they came with, and it's actually a pretty nice bag, so I like that. Uh, and we'll just take and throw that token down in there, and that's where I'm gonna be drawing, you guys can hear it, the other Necrons as they spawned. So now that my guy has gone, we're gonna draw our next card. Continue on with it. Damn, how badly did I shuffle this? I know I shuffled the hell out of it, so we'll just take and move him up. That's his four actions, he's done. Let's draw our next card. Okay, so this is the Necron symbol there, imp or whatever the hell they call that thing. So now we're gonna take and draw one of our Necron cards. We have folks in. Place a Necron minion counter on translocation square five. All right, so we'll set this here out of the way and find square number five, which is here. Now, since there is a Necron already in square five, that means each adjacent square is going to receive a Necron. So let me grab out four of these counters out of the bag. It's not too bad when it's just like one or two, when you got four of them, that's a lot. All right, so let's see. And of course we're dropping one, two, three, four. Okay, here we go, we'll set these guys out and you guys can see some of the Immortals have spawned, bam. And just like that, we've populated the board with Necrons. Now, had a Space Marine been in one of those four squares, he would have taken a wound. That's just as easy as the game plays. Now, hold on, let me grab that token. Crap. Got it. Okay. Now we're back at it. Focus in. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take and draw ourselves another card. All right, our yellow guy, our heavy gunner here, is ready to go again. He does good damage at range, but he only has three actions. So we want to take and make the most of his three. Let's see, what how long is this range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he can shoot if he moves up a couple. But let's see. If I take and move him here and stop and take a shot at six, he'll be sitting in one. And one gets a spawn, that'll be bad for him. So let's go one, two, three. We can't move diagonal, so we can't go one, two. We have to go orthogonally throughout the maze. We'll go one, two, three, and we'll just end him here. That's gonna be his activation. Let's take and draw ourselves another. All right, our green guy, which is our flamer, he has actually the shortest range, but again, he's got flamethrowers, so he has the chance to kill lots of Necrons if he rolls well. He also only has three actions. So let's take and look through here. Let's see, one, two, three. Oh, I'd have to end him. That's the thing is when you're first starting out, you're kind of jammed onto this stairwell. What the hell? I think there's like a hole in this bag or something because something's going on. My little tokens keep dropping out. Let's take and throw that on the table. All right, sorry about that, guys. They, uh, I have to look at that bag. I kept hearing them plink as I was sitting there with it in my lap. Okay, one, two, three. Should we risk it? Yeah, let's risk it. It's one, two, three. There are his three actions. We're gonna hope that spawn point one does not spawn so he can take and move out of there later on. Let's draw our next one. All right, our blue guy, our ultramarine is ready to go. He gets four actions with a range of four. Which way is he gonna go? He can go one, two, three, four. Oh, it can't end there. Or he can go one, two, three. Yeah, he's pinned in, so his first thing's just gonna have to be moving up. We'll take and go to our next one's probably gonna be, oh, damn. We're gonna get hit with Necrons hard here at the end because all my guys are going first. Our green guy, we're gonna have him go shooting up. One, two, three. That'll be his three actions, and this way he's covering both of these portals, or both of these alleys, and he can start uh, pushing fire up, just depending on which uh, exit point or stairwell comes to once we do this part. All right, so let's flip her over. All right, there's Necron. We draw our next card. This is going to be place Necron in counter translocation square four. All right, four is here. So we're just going to, actually, we just need one. One Necron token right there, bam, just like that. 
And that's it. You guys can see this is the game. Now, the cool part, though, is as we take and expand this out and we keep going on, uh, we'll take and put a uh, stairwell on one of these points and say it's heading out this way. We'll take, oh, my other thing's boxed up. There's two more of these sets, these uh, play mats here that you can take and put out so you can kind of expand. And there's a campaign game that as you go through one area, you'll go through the stairs down to the next area, down to the next area, and it gets progressively harder. And any Marines you lose along the way are lost. So you have to make it through all three levels without losing your guys. But you guys can see, it's an easy game. It's not hard, so it's a good gateway game to this plastic crack here that Games Workshop loves to sell. I wonder how much these guys, uh, I think it's something like 30 bucks or 40 bucks for a pack of five Space Marines nowadays. Yeah, these things are just overly expensive. All right, but our next one, ooh, Ultramarine, our blue guy. He's got four actions. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll have him go shooting this way. And we'll have our gray guy go up that way. So next card, our yellow guy. He's gonna go one, two, and I'm gonna have him stop here and take a shot action here. He is getting a plus one since he's firing at a Necron uh, that's not adjacent to him. So since that's a three or better, he actually only has to roll a two or better to take that Necron out. So let's see what we get here. Two or better, <laughs> it just couldn't be a one. So he took this Necron out, let's take and toss him in the bag, perfect. All right, now let's draw our next card. Ooh, the Necrons are activating. Let's see what we get for our Necron activation. Place one Necron minion counter on translocation square one, and then place one Necron counter on translocation square two. So these are only placing one each versus uh, placing one per area. So actually, these are the two that I just cleared out. So let's grab two tokens out. And we'll take and put one back there and one back here. Now, this is dangerous for my blue guy since he is adjacent to square one. So we do not want him to get wounded. Let's draw our last card, and it's another Necron card. So let's draw and see what they get. Come focus in here. Place a Necron on square six. Square six is this far one. So again, we're only gonna need one because they cannot spawn on portals. Now, if this bag is empty, when we go to take and spawn, then you actually do not have to spawn. I guess they figure you're beat up enough at that point. All right, that is it for round one. You guys give me just one sec here. Let me take and shuffle up our cards and we will get back into it really quickly. Like I said, this game is good i think for people who have children they want to play a tabletop game with them or someone who's not is into tabletop games but this is obviously not something that you're going to be like oh my god this is the most complex chrome ridden awesome bit of you know space marine fun that you've ever had but it is a cute little game that you can get uh, some people into I think my little boy is going to take and get a kick out of it. He, uh, he enjoyed watching me put the guys together. That is something neat about this is the Space Marines themselves are uh, pushed together. So you do not have to actually be able to build to take and, you know, put them together and use them. But it is probably a good idea to put a little glue on them instead. Now they did build very well. Actually, let's see if we get that focus in. So... If you want to paint, if you're into painting, these are your usual typical Games Workshop stuff that is good and has detail that you can go ahead and do that if you're into it. So let's take and get started again. Draw our next card. Starting off with the Necrons. Necrons are gonna get, not focusing on, on counter square three. All right, where is three? Three is there, so ooh. That's gonna fill up three of them. Let's grab three out of our bag here. Let's see how many we're getting. Now you guys can see the back end is really filling out at this point. All right, so one, two, three, Necrons. All right, we're definitely gonna have to start flushing these guys out to get going. All right, next is 
ultramarine guy, my blue guy. He's like my favorite. Well, no, I think heavy weapon's my favorite, but this is like the leader, so. If I go one, two, three to shoot. Oh. Yeah, we'll do it. One, two, because I can't keep just waiting. Because if your initiative deck here, if this runs out, not the initiative, the, uh, the enemy deck runs out, then you lose. So you have a little bit of a time limit. So at one, two, third action is going to be a shot, and he is adjacent, so he does get the plus one, so anything but a one will kill this Necron. Four, bam. Necron is dead, and uh, should we risk it? Should we use our last action to push up? Yeah, let's push up. We gotta get going, and hopefully on his next card, I can move him here to the control center, and I just need to roll a six once to unlock it and we'd be good. All right, so next is our, this guy, he's gonna have to take and the Gray Wolves, that's who those guys are. He's gonna have to kill this Necron. He's not gonna be able to move through him. And he also, he gets a free action against Necrons that are adjacent. So he doesn't get a bonus in the chance to hit, but he does get to attack him for free. So this is our free action. Three, got it. Necron's dead. So this gives me four movement points that I still have to spend. Throw that in there. So one, two, three. Should we go up that way? Yeah, we'll go up that way. And since I can't move up any further, since my Marine's there, we'll have to end there. Take it. Flip this. Yellow guy's going. Yellow guy's going to blow the shit out of us. No, yellow guy's stuck. Ah, if I had held him there, do I move him up? I can move him up, but I can't shoot around that corner, so I can't do anything. Damn, I'm wasting a turn because of the order the cards are coming in. All right, green guy's going. All right. If I fire there, he's got, ooh, he's only got three actions. So I can move up here and put fire. Yeah, I want to clear this out because my guys are coming this way. So depending on which way we go, we're going to have to clear out one of these lanes. So let's go here. We're going to spend one action, and then we're going to fire at this guy with our second action. If we get a six, then we kill everything that's adjacent to him, which would just be two, but you can see how to kill a lot of them. All right, come on, six, baby. Nope, five. Still got him, though. So cleared that one out. All right, next card is going to be... Ooh, Necrons. All right, let's see what they're getting. They are getting, what is this? The next, oh no! The next Space Marine who has a turn, whether in this round or the next, misses their turn. All right, it says place this card next to the board so you remember it. As long as it's not him, my blue guy, I'm good. All right, here's the gray guy. I can deal with the gray guy, so we're just gonna take him. Keep flipping. All right, there's my blue guy. That's what I needed. Ultramarine step in for one action. Now I've got three chances to roll a six here to take and get this. Three more actions left. Did I, a first one, that's what I'm talking about, baby. All right, so this says when we, on a six or more, uh, the Space Marine has successfully activated the, con, uh, the controls, any other is a failure. Once the, hold on, focus on for me. Once the control, uh, Console has been successfully activated. Flip all portal counters over. One of them will show an open symbol. This is now treated as an empty square. Place the stairwell, a uh, spare stairwell tile adjacent to the newly uh, open portal. So extension on that square. So yeah, we win when we get all our Marines onto that. So let's take and look here. We're going to be, okay, so that still has a portal symbol, this one does not have a portal symbol. So this is gonna come off and I'm gonna knock a Marine down and we'll set these cards up here out of the way. This is now our exit. So when we go to exit, once my Marines are there, we're good. And this is just obviously the other portal. So now that those portals are open, Necrons can spawn on them. So that is something to worry about. Let's take and draw our next card here. Yellow, yellow. 
Okay, he's not there. He's there. Oh, he's going to have to start clearing him out. Okay, he's going to attack. He's got two actions left, one action to move up. All right. First roll needs a three or better. No! Second roll. Six. Oh, I got him on that first one. I could have moved off. This is bad juju because now he is uh, standing on a spawn point. Spawn point two. I do not want to draw a card for that because he'll take a wound. All right, let's take and draw our next card. Green guy. He is... Let's go one and fire there for two. Try to clear this guy out. Now, he is tougher. He's a four better. He's one of the immortals. All right, six. That's what I'm talking about. We got him. And I got one more action left. And since I have a line of sight to this guy, and if I get him with a six... Wait, that was a six. Damn, I'm not going to rewind it, but I think that was a six that he rolled, which means this one actually goes down as well. So that's good news. So I have one more action left. I'm actually going to use it now at this guy to try to take these two out on the off chance that I roll six twice. What's the odds? Come on, baby. Hit it again. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, come on. Die, you Necron bastards. Actually, I loved playing those Necrons back when I played in the day. That was my team. Necron and Chaos is what I played, but I am not in 40K like that anymore because it's more expensive than a mortgage and a wife and children all put together. <laughs> so our next card is Necrons. So I'll draw for them. What are they getting? Until the end of the next round of resilience of all immortals is five. Ooh, good thing that did not come out now. All right, so we'll leave this here. So, well, this is good because there's only one card left in the round. So, next crown, uh, next crown, <laughs> neck on, neck on. Uh, where are we doing? On location counter six, which is here. All right, focus back in for me, baby. There you go. All right, so that's actually only going to spawn one Necron right there. See, this was adjacent, so once they're adjacent, you just keep going out. Oh, and that portal's open too, so that will spawn one as well, which is actually fine with me because, like I said, these guys don't move. So if they're out of the way of where I'm going, since I'm going down over here, I don't care if they're all spawned over there. I can just take and run my guys down and let them fill up uh, areas where I'm not attacking. All right, let me prop this down for a sec and shuffle these cards back up. I'm just going to give them a quick shuffle, randomize it a little bit for you guys. I don't want to keep you waiting, and I don't know how well my editing, new editing computer is going to do, so we'll take and do this quickly. Card. And throw that one there. And let's take and flip her over. Get the next turn started. Ultramarine, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Throw this over there. All right, focus back in for me. There we go. I'm recording this on like 4K definition, so it better do good. I gotta keep the focus good. All right, he's got four actions. My yellow and my green guy only have three. These two have four. I don't remember how much the red guy has, but I think it's four as well. So the heavier weapons don't get as many actions. He goes one two and then i'll fire i'm gonna fire twice instead of trying to move any farther because i do not want to stand there i gotta get the yellow guy off of that so this since they're not adjacent i do need three or better to kill these necrons all right that's one necron second one two necrons down all right, so both of these are gone. The pathway is clear. We just got to get out of danger. All right, hopefully we can get this done in this last round. Oh, Necrons. Necrons are gone. My stuff's all piling up. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. All right, so draw a card for them. See what we get, folks. In. Oh, Necron Warriors are at four, and we are at the start of the round. This is not good. All right. Green guy, green guy, which way do I want to go with him? I don't want to clog up two lanes, so I'm wondering if it would be better to go up here and 
try to burn some of those guys out. But then I'd be standing on five, and I don't want to stand on five. I just, I hate leaving my guys on those. <sighs> okay, we'll go up one, and we'll fire just to clear out one of those guys. Well, actually, he's tucked kind of out of the way. Should I just leave him there? Wait, I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot. I've got these special cards. Each guy gets one, and this guy has this... Uh, that can only be given to the flame guy if he's not part of, he can't use it. Play this card at the start of his turn until the end of the turn, his range character is increased to six. And each time he performs a move action, he can immediately perform one free attack action. Uh, I do not want to use that yet. I do have one of these cards for each one of my guys, but I've been, uh, I've forgotten about them. I was thinking about saving them. Uh, the blue one, Son of Gilliman. Play this card at uh, any point during Cassius' turn. Till the end of the turn, increase his action character to 6 to 5 and add 1 to the dice when he performs an attack. So it makes him an uber badass. Uh, my wolf guy, three of my guys when uh, I was drawing these, what you do is at the start of the game, you're going to draw two cards per guy, and then you pick from all the cards one for each guy. And three of them happen to be the specific cards for the guys. And it can only be given to him. He can perform two free attack actions against adjacent Necrons till the end of the turn. If he performs an attack action against the Necron adjacent square and that attack fails, you can re-roll the dice. So it makes him badass. And my heavy weapons guy actually got a medic card. Let's focus in. Come on, focus for me. Uh, anytime during the Space Marine's turn, Turn the data card of this Space Marine or that of a Space Marine stand in adjacent square so the wounded side is face down. So basically you can heal. Now I've forgotten about those cards early on, but it's not going to help me for now. Yeah, we'll still just... Oh, I can't move. Now screw it. We're going to go. Because I was here, we're going to go one, two, and we're going to fire here. And we're going to try to take this guy out and see if we can go. All right. Anything... Wait, no, I need a four or higher. They're beefier. Six, that got him. <laughs> it would have killed adjacent ones too, but there are none adjacent. Let's draw our next card. Yellow. Yellow's just gonna make a beeline for the exit. One, two, three, he's gone. Blue again. One, two, three, four. We're gonna just leave him there. We're bugging for the exit as hard as we can go. Necrons. Two of my guys are standing on portals. Uh-oh, this could be bad. Place an Ekron on square five, which my guy is in. So this is how you get attacked. Green just went to wounded. So if I can get him next to yellow, yellow can take and pop that card to take and get rid of that wound. Green's gonna go. He's gonna go one, two. And like I said, we're gonna take and pop this card from yellow, burn it and we're gonna flip him back over from his wounded side. Let him play those one-off cards, and now we'll go and draw our next card, Necrons. Going again, translocation square one. That is perfectly fine, because one is at the far end of the table. Hold on, focus back in, there we go. Sorry, like I said, it is new equipment, so I am getting used to it as we're going along. I do apologize. All right, so. There we go. We'll draw our next card. Necrons again. Hopefully this is the last one for them this turn. Uh, Translocation square two. All right, not too bad. I can deal with two. See, every time I hold the damn card in, it loses my focus. All right, so two. And now we're going to take and draw again. Gray, which is good because we need to get him rushed in. One, two, three. Four, he's running in and gray again. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm so close to bugged out of here. Uh, I can't move him up. Yellow, he's gonna go one, two, three. And I'll tell you what, to save us time, because we're getting down to the end, we've been playing about 35 minutes and I like to keep them about half hour. Uh, we're gonna call this game because all we're gonna do on the next turn is just run them in and at most I can only take probably one wound from these guys running across translocation square four. So we're not gonna take 
Well, unless, yeah, because it'd only be one wound for there because they wouldn't be able to take and uh, get a whole bunch in. So they would take and get onto their little stairwell. And then you would take another one of these map tiles and place it on there for the next one. And there is a card for mission briefing two, then mission briefing three. And those will take and introduce, let's take and grab some of this stuff out. You guys can see double-sided map tiles. And it doesn't matter which one you use. They just tell you to pick one at random. So that's actually kind of neat that it's not wholly specific. And then there are these Necrons that come. And then where is the Necron Lord? I should have a token for him. I don't think there is a token. Oh, wait. The Necron Lord is on the back of the console. So there's the Necron Lord that can take and come into the game. And like I said, these other ones, you need a five or better to kill these guys. Oh, uh, purpose there. There it is. You're gonna need a five or better to kill these guys. And then you're gonna need a six or better when it comes to the Lord himself. And that's the game. That's the, the gist of the game. You guys can see it is not a hard game. It's uh, really kind of an uh, introductory game to get you into, like I said, the plastic crack that is uh, Warhammer 40,000 and all its iterations. P they probably want people to play this, like it, get into it, and then want something a little meatier and maybe jump into Warhammer Quest, like Blackstone Fortress, or um, what is it, Silver Tower, and then they've got another one uh, that came out not too long back. I uh, don't remember, Hammerfall or something? I can't remember the specific name of it. There's another one. Uh, but I like the game. It's a fun game. Like I said, I think it's a good game to play with your children, uh, younger players maybe, or like I said, players who aren't as into a deep board gaming experience as uh, some of the people who are probably going to be watching my channel. But if you're looking for this game just for a solitaire experience for yourself, uh, for a heavier gamer, like more people who are going to be watching my channel, I don't know that it's really going to strike that itch for you. It's fun, but I think it'll get a little dull, and I don't think there's a whole lot of repetition after you've played through the campaign itself. You can play one, levels one, two, or three, uh, you know, singularly by themselves, but I think the most fun you're going to have with this game is trying to make it through the entirety of the labyrinth, the whole campaign where you take your four guys and you push them through, and at that point you would take this uh, uh, second stairwell tile and once you laid out the next map tile you would be placing another one so you'd have three of these big map tiles connected together and you would push through and complete three missions so like this one mission that we completed getting the console we have a second mission where we have to do whatever it is I actually haven't played the second mission yet and then the third mission probably taking out the Necron Lord uh, himself but after that, there's there's not going to be a whole lot of replay value to it. You'll probably have experienced the the most that this game has to offer. But the game is uh, relatively cheap, especially at thirty nine ninety nine or you know forty bucks uh, for the game. It's not uh, being sold in local game stops like I was in my uh, favorite local game store, Gamers Armory, earlier today picking up some X Wing stuff. Wave two that just released Mining Guild Ties. Definitely check that out. And I did not see they had it, but I got this actually at Barnes & Noble. So it seems, like I said, more of a run-of-the-mill, uh, generalized public game than uh, what your usual Warhammer 40k fare. But if you got a young kid you want to play with, or if you want something with a smaller footprint, because the game can be played here just on this little map tile itself, it's a fun little game. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I'm going to play it with the, uh, the missus later and see what she thinks about it. So I definitely recommend some people try it out, but if you prefer a deeper experience, this isn't for you, this isn't the way to go. But if you like a little lighter fare every now and then, you just wanna chuck some dice, and by the way, it's nice dice. They included good dice in this. They're very weighty and a good feel to them. If you just want a mindless dice chucker where you don't have to worry about the enemy and you're just trying to work your way through, good game for that. So definitely check it out. It's called Warhammer Adventures. Let me grab the... Uh, box cover for you guys uh, and then a bashing board 
Warhammer, uh, Space Marine Adventures, all right? Labyrinth of the Necrons. I don't know if they're gonna do uh, another one that's different or, you know, a different area, but like I said, neat little game, definitely check it out. All right, that's gonna be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.